people balance their internal and external lives through the process of heart-based meditation. He is also the regional facilitator of the Heartfulness Institute in Tamil Nadu. He guides and leads a team of 2,000 plus heartfulness trainers and thousands of volunteers in taking the message of heartfulness across the cross spectrum of seekers. He helps people in finding the true purpose of their life and facilitates them in finding the right balance between the two wings of life, material and spiritual. He blends well across a wide social spectrum and has an uncanny ability to connect to audience from across ethnicities and age groups. For many who meet him, he comes through as a practical and humble human being who continues to focus on the importance of individual, nation and global integration. Now, I deem it a great privilege and immense honor to welcome today's chief guest, Mr. Prakash Seshadri Sir, founder and CEO of Sea Change Consulting, to grace this occasion and enlighten this gathering with this valuable message. Good morning to all the dignitaries who are on the stage now who are seated with them. Uh, hearty welcome to all the students here. How are you all doing? I keep asking this question throughout. I'll give you the answer. I would like to hear the units, and I am told that uh, right now it's also being watched in YouTube Live in other rooms in this college and also in your Google campus. Plus, there are several thousands of people who are watching this right now. When I ask you the question, how are you doing? I want you to answer really one single voice. I am doing great. I am going to ask the question. Let me see whether I can hear you. How are you doing? I am doing great. How are you doing? I am doing great. Till you are able to be heard in the security post with a friend, I keep asking the question. After the only let us start talking. How are you doing? I am doing great. Not audible. About 30% of the people are talking. The rest 70 are still listening. Maybe I've gone to a slumber. How are you doing? How are you doing? 70% have joined. One final time I'm going to ask. Especially boys are not joining the fun. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay, good. I want you to take a note of this day which I'm going to share with you. I think while introducing the football the topic on which I am going to address the gathering today. The topic is going to be something very interesting for those who watch science fiction movies. How many of you have watched Steven Spielberg movies? Do you know one of the best movies that he made? It is called Back to the Future. Back to the Future is the topic that I am going to take. There is a specific reason. I want you to make a note of this date in your notebook or in your memory right now. 1st of May 2028. 1st of May 2028. There is a specific reason to that. In all probability by the time when you graduate out of this college with flying colors and all of you hopefully getting the prime package that they are talking about, 11 lakhs and plus. Maybe with inflation it might have gone up. If possible, if possible, I want at least 10 to 20 percent of those passing out to start your own companies and become entrepreneurs. If I see 20 percent of you there, I would like to give them a round of applause right now. How many of you have the guts to say that I want to become an entrepreneur when I graduate out of the college? Raise your hands. About eight, that's all. Okay, a lot of work to be done, I guess. First of May 2028 also happens to be the labor day. Normally they say that you need to have the proof of the labor, the work that you put in. Your director, Dr. Dattatri, your principal, Dr. Srinivasulu, your uh, freshman head, uh, Dr. Subramanian, kept talking about putting in hard work. Of course, I would like to add the word smart work to that. You will see what is smart work. If you put in the smart work and the hard work, 
when you graduate off, in all probability, if the date is going to be 1st of May 2028, and if God willing, let's see whether we can meet for the pass out session on that day, then we'll see a future that is being carved out for which the seed is being shown today. Back to the future, if you really know the story of the movie, it is about an incident that happens in the present. And uh, through the use of a time machine, they go back in time, make certain corrections, and then they come back to the present to see that the impact of the change has happened and they are actually benefiting from the change that they did in the past. Recently, I was reading an article of a science fiction based novel where the person actually goes back in time by about 150 years and buys one gram of gold. Just one gram of gold. And 150 years later, on the given day, he literally owns the entire earth. That is the value of compounding income, in case you didn't know. What is this back of back to the future here we are talking about? Let me share one small story that I read several years ago. Specifically, I share this with all the students. All of us would have seen the elephant in the temple specifically. If you observe it closely, you will find that the temple is chained to a wall using a very simple, normal rope made of thread. If you really look at the story of an elephant, when it is born, when it is just a calf, it starts growing. What the Mahbud does is, he chains the, the elephant, the calf, to the wall with an iron chain. Being a small elephant, what it does is it keeps kicking, it keeps kicking, it keeps kicking. At some point of time, the power of the elephant, when it is quite young, is not that strong enough for it to escape as they say, you know, unshackling from the chain. So it stops at some point of time, giving up that I am not going to be able to escape. When the Mahut understands that this is what the time is for me now, because now the elephant has been completely chained, not physically, but mentally. What he does is he removes the iron chain and then ties it with a normal rope. For the rest of the life, the elephant does not unshackled itself because it has programmed itself in the head that I am not going to be able to break this chain at all. Forgetting that the chain has been removed now, a rope has been put in its place. Almost all the people I meet in life, specifically the students whom I see across here, you are like that chained elephant. All you have right now is a rope as the chain between you and the wall and the mahut with a small stick in his hand. And the Mahu with the stick in the hand is the world outside of you. What is this world outside of you? Which keeps telling you this is how you have to live. This is what you can do. This is what you cannot do. This is what the rights and wrong of life is. And you have been programmed to live a life which is not yours. Let me go back to the same date again. First of May, 20. I just want to know how many of you listening. 2028. If I am making a movie today and it is based on my current life, which is what I am living on this date, which is 7th of August 2024, in all probabilities, 99.9999% of the people, not only here in the world, are living a life for which the script has been written by someone else. Today watch a famous successful movie. You will find that the hero is doing so many things heroic. He wins, he marries the heroine, kills the villain and in the climax he wins. But how many of us know that the hero has no freedom whatsoever to write a script on his own? He has to act in front of the camera the way the director or the scriptwriter or the producer wants him to. He has to cry, he has to laugh, he has to smile, he has to dance, he has to fight based on the script given by the world. Here this is the director. Which is what is happening to almost all of us with an exception of 0.01% people who are outside in the world. I'll come to that a bit later. If you really want to write a script where the climax scene, specifically of your life, has to be based on what your life has to be. 
On 1st of May 2028, if there is going to be a climax scene enacted in your life, which the world has to see, your life is the movie and the world is the audience. If you allow the world to write the script that you have to live, what is likely to happen is that they will also decide whether you are successful or a failure. Ideally, in my life, when I learned this 30, 40 years ago, I decided that I will write the script of what my life has to be. Nobody else has to decide that my life has to be like this. Whether it's successful, not successful, it is not their problem, it is my issue. It is for me to decide. How we can manage that, I'll come to that a bit later. Let me say, okay, today you have a four-year canvas in front of you. You have an empty storybook in front of you. I am giving you a life with 365 days into 4 years to you, which is close to 1400 days plus in front of you, to shape a life that you have. And write a climax scene which will unfold to the world on 1st of May 2028. What will that movie's climax look like? Even if you cannot live that life actually, do you have the freedom to at least dream and write? I was walking around and I was uh, shown the many blocks and I found that one of the block name is after Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Many of you, for the sake of repetition, let me share the definition that he gave of what a dream is. He said the dream is not what you get when you are asleep. He said the dream is what which makes you not to get sleep while you are awake. So that you change the dream and achieve. All of this is rhetoric if you read it, like it, put a thumbs up, clap and then continue with the life. Would you want a life on 1st of May 2020? It is a placeholder, the date can be anything else. I am also told by a college that in case some of you don't understand the English, they are going to get this translated into Telugu later. So, I think I would thank the management for bringing out that offer. I also gave them some A tools which are available, which can actually simultaneously like my translate this talk into any language of your choice. This is available free and given by Government of India. I have given the details and some of your technology students who are in the second, third and fourth year may be able to use this and make it a reality for future sessions. First of May 2028, which is the future four years from now, approximately, plus or minus few weeks. Let me now take this storybook which is going to unfold in my life, starting from today. Would you like your storybook to read anything else other than how you want it to be? There is a choice you have to make. On 1st of May 2028, I want my climax. When I graduate out of this college, I want either a placement in this company, in this package, in this line, or I want to start a startup company. For many of you, think startup company is very difficult. I want to share a very short story. Many of you may already be aware, but when I share the name, you will be able to connect it. There was a couple of these college kids during the pandemic who were able to do nothing and they were sitting at home. This was around 2020, four years back. And they were just going around studying technology and then they found out that one of the biggest challenges in pandemic is the ability to buy groceries and things like that. And uh, with all those Delivery partners who are present there, the delivery was like two, three days, big basket and so many other people. So they decided, sitting out of a simple room in the bedroom or garage, as you want to call it, in California language, they said that let us revolutionize this industry. One or two just college boys, not even completed graduation, they wrote a code, they wrote a package, and they put a business idea around it. They found a few people to fund it, and they started a company which currently has a valuation in four years of 1,400 crores. How many of you know the name of the company? It's called Zepto. Go and Google and find out what it is. Like this, I saw in the promotional video one of your students standing in front of IIT Madras Research Center. It's an incubation center where I go and consult and get a lot of the startup companies there. There are more than 300, 400 startup companies are housed there Predominantly, many of them are students on the big dream. The ability of your dream is not limited by anyone else other than your imagination. If any of you have read the story of Walt Disney, any of you have traveled to the US and seen Disneyland, 
the entire stuff was created first in the head of the founder of this thing and he coined a term called imagining go and google it you'll find several youtube videos and articles research pages on that he just coined two words imagination and engineering he called it imagining he said what the human brain today lacks through the world this was like 70 80 years back and it's unfortunately even today is almost true he said that people do not use the god given gift of being able to imagine the future is first born in your head in the form of an imagination you look around this room you will find at least 100 to 120 objects which did not exist about 90 to 100 years ago out of that 70 percent of the object that you see in the world see in this room around you has been invented by one single person Thomas Alva Edison all he did was imagine how would the future be if I change this issue and gave a solution to that he thought about darkness and candlelight he came out with light he looked at the drama is being performed. He said, how nice it will be if the dramas can be captured and shown to the world. He came out with the motion film. Like this for each invention. I am only taking the example of Thomas Alva Edison because it's a name very well known. Today, world over, what is easily available in plenty, like breathing air, our ability to drink fresh water, our ability to hear as we wish. We don't need to pay for any of these things. This is a gift which is lying empty for many of us within the six inch between the years, what you call the brain. Fortunately or unfortunately, there is this famous joke which goes around saying that there is nothing right about the left brain and there is nothing left in the right brain and hence people don't improve. Right brain is where the creativity happens. Left brain is where your logical thinking happens. People are so logical, when you are logical, the only reference point you have to the world is how the life is currently being lived and I will only live that life because that's what I have been tutored, that's what I have been told, that's how I have been conditioned. Like that baby elephant which was chained to an iron chain when it was a car. He got programmed in his head that it cannot escape the chain because it's heavy and when it was chained to a rope, he did not even push because he thought it is prepared. Many of us, at least fortunately or unfortunately, what happens is our society's current conditioning. By the age you get into a school, which is around five, by the time you cross your school and come to a college, the damage to the operating system here is already done. The world keeps telling you, starting from your parents. I'm not blaming here, I'm only sharing certain perspectives in terms of what happens to the world. I have studied a lot. I have spoken to more than half a million students in the last 20-30 years. Met them, interacted with them, corporate executives. Personally, I have met and interacted more than 30 to 40 million people in my life. Studying people. One thing I found, it almost happens that somebody tells me what I should think, somebody tells me what I should not think. Don't do this, don't do that, you are not capable, you cannot achieve this. And what happens is, you have been like that elephant, continuously programmed throughout your life and told that this is not possible, that's not possible, don't do it, that is risky, this is risky. I'm not asking you to take risk and jump off the cliff, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, we have left that major component, God-given free component to us, our ability to imagine. What are we going to imagine here? I'm going to imagine a future. Go back to the day again. Let me ask the question again. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great. I keep asking that. Whenever I see a little bit slump in the audience, that question will come back. First of May 2028. Take a sheet of paper today when you go out of this room, when, when you either go home or whatever. Write what is that you want to do. Do not please ask anyone's input or advice. Because the world gives one thing free of cost all the time, like what I am giving, advice. Half the time, or almost almost all the time, this advice is given from what I have experienced in my life, which need not be your life. 
let's say that you want to go and help Google like Sundar Pichai currently is doing. Go and write. The people will laugh. The world will laugh. Don't worry about that. Right? Whether it becomes a reality or not, we'll check that out later. Because even if you aim for Everest, which is 29,000 feet, and we are able to reach the main base camp, which is 17,000 feet, you have still done far better than a mountainer who is aiming to climb 5,000 feet mountain and lands up at 1,000 feet. That's why they say aim for the moon, and if you miss it, God knows you may reach the stars, which is much farther. Think big. We'll come to that much, much later in your life to see when you start thinking big, the way you look at life completely changes. One of the books which changed my way of thinking was a book which was written in 1959. This is available in Amazon, it is available as a free PDF to many of the sites. You can read this book wherever you are free. Normally I tell students at least every month read one self-help book because it changes the way you look at the world. This book was written by an author called David Squats. The name of the book is called The Magic of Thinking Big, 1959. He just says the way thinking big, thinking differently in your life, how it can actually change the way in which you actually unfold what all along you thought was only a dream. First of May 2028, this is my dream, this is what I want to achieve. I want to get a package of 20 lakhs, I want to get a package of 40 lakhs, I want a job in this company in Germany, I want a job in this company in Japan, why aim only for India? I want a job in a company in USA. How to convert that into a reality, I'll give the steps before we end this session today. Write that. Having written that, go ahead and tell all the people in the world whom you personally know and who care for you. Not for those who don't care, don't put in social media. People have only stomach burning issues there. They get acidity looking at what you are aiming for. Tell the people who really love and they have affection for your group, your close friends. This is what I want to achieve. Why? Because a dream or a goal, when you conceive in the head and tell the people, it creates some kind of a fuel inside you, which is what is called as motivation. It helps me to be motivated because I communicate to the people whom I know that this is what I want to reach in my life. Whatever it is, whether you reach there, you don't reach there, do not worry. It's about aiming for Everest. Whatever you reach will far better than what currently you may be thinking of. If you are in the 99.99% category. Once I write that, the same way that movie happened in Steven Spielberg's movie, Back to the Future, he went back, made certain changes, and by making those necessary changes, when he came back to the current time, the story had taken the change that he wanted to happen in his life. Likewise, if you do nothing about your life on 1st of May 2028. Your life will be completely different from if you are able to make that dream. Now imagine you are sitting in this room. We are having a pass out parade and all those who are sitting in the room on 1st of May 2028, I am addressing to you on 1st of May 2028 and all of you are standing up and saying this is what I imagined on 7th of August 2024 and I have achieved it today. Would you feel better if that happens? Yes or no? Then go ahead and imagine. You don't lose anything. Absolutely nothing. If you think I am going to be ashamed in case I lose, forget all the people. I am telling you bluntly out of my life experience of meeting more than 50, 60 lakh people. Nobody actually cares for Blankly put, they may have a little level, oh my god, it happened to you, is it? Oh, oh sorry, oh this happened. And they are busy, you know, going on Insta, checking something, Facebook post and whatever. You all know as students that beyond a certain point, whatever happens in life does not have a lasting impact except that happens to you. If it happens to me, it is painful. If it happens to somebody, it is a matter of sympathy. It's perfectly fine. Please be selfish to the extent that do not give the script of life to somebody else. Once you do that, you take it up. It's not my phone, it's on flight mode. Once you take it up, I decide that first of May 2028, this is the dream that I have, this is what is going to happen to me. 
plus or minus few months, days doesn't matter. Now I have the next four years to do what I need to do. Which is, in the climax the hero is winning. Everybody is awarding, clapping, appreciating. Now I have to write this book on how to live that. This is what is called as goal setting in life. In goal setting there are two things, please bear in mind. Setting a goal which pleases the world. Or setting a goal which I personally believe I like to set. Go for a goal that you would like to set for yourself. Don't go for a goal to please the world. You will never be able to please the world. Please, I am telling you out of practical experience. There is a famous behavioral quotation which says, if you want to please all, you please none. You cannot please the world. You can't even please your mother. You can't even please your father. Anybody here you can say with certainty you have pleased your parents all the time. The big thumbs down, no? Not possible. It didn't happen during my lifetime. They are gone. I don't think it's going to happen. No parent is going to be completely happy with you. Guaranteed. So, do not worry about it. Once you said that, that becomes your primary momentum, the goal that you have in life. Once you set that goal of that job, the dream job or the dream company you want to start, work backwards to write the script. On that script, the day one starts today, 7th of August 2024, is the first day, first script of my 1400 days between now and 1st of May 2028 on how I want to live my life. Please bear in mind, one or two days if you go here and there, it's perfectly fine. Please give space for in your script for some humor, for some entertainment, all that is fine. I am not asking the students to give up your life. All that, however we push you, you are not going to listen, so I don't want to go in that direction at all. This life, you need to parallelly have whatever sense of enjoyment is needed while being aligned to the goal. Once I set that goal, let me share something completely different. I do not want to use the word discipline here because that is a word that students do not like, even I don't like. But there is one thing that won't control your life. If you take about three or four key points, traits that are going to help change your life, right on top there is one trait which is going to help you reach that goal. I'll give you an exercise. If you have a paper, you can do it here or make a mental load of it. I'll go back and do it a bit later. Take a sheet of paper and write the time at which you get up in the morning. You don't need to share it with me, you don't need to share it with anyone. This is for you to read and self-introspect. Write about four columns there. In column number one, write serial number. In column number two, write start time, end time. In the start time, you write, okay, I wake up at 6, 6.30, whatever time frame. Write 6 o'clock. And then write brackets of 6 to 6.15, 6.15 to 6.30, 6.30 to 6.45. And then write up to the time that you go to bed in the night, 9, 9, 30, 10, whatever. Once that is done, come to column number 3. In the column number 3, just write in this time what you normally do. Please feel free to do, write that I am doing nothing means you do nothing, it's okay, perfectly fine. The world has enough time passes. It's okay for us to join the bandwagon. Just write that. 6.15 to 6.45. did nothing. 6.45 is summer. Tell the neighbor. What did you do? He did nothing. We can do jointly, you know, joint nothings. Like that you write. Once you write that, be sincere there because this is going to help you change your entire life in single day. Once you write that, go to the column which is next to that, right on top, the word results. Column number serial number, column two was the time uh, slots that you wrote. Column number three was the activity that you did for the day. Column number four, you write results. What did I achieve by doing this activity? Very simple. This is an exercise I even tell corporate CEOs to do. I tell government officials to do. I tell IAS officers to do when I take sessions for them. I have taken sessions for collectors, I have taken collectors, sessions for ministers, I have taken for police officials, DGPs. I give the simple exercise. I am sharing the same secret with you because if you make that change today, you will find a very big change in undoing the past and realizing a future of first May 2028. 
In that fourth column you are writing results. Write what did you achieve by this. If you write candidly, you write honestly without holding back any information. Once it is done, have a look at the sheet. Now I am going to give you two changed headings for the last two columns. In the last column, above results, write the word effect. In the column 3, above the word activities, write the word cause. This is where the biggest advantage humans have over other species. There are more than 4 crore species in this world, in the land, in the sea, put together. All of them collectively do not have one thing that we have, human, which is called as our ability to think, the ability to discriminate, what we call as the sixth sense. Ability to discriminate typically is to find what is good, what is bad, what is richness, what is... We always are able to differentiate between two things, but the real ability to discriminate Swami Vivekananda said this, our Guru Rivir Daji has said this, is your ability to decide what effect you want in your life. And then cause saying if anybody has studied physics in college, in plus two, you know the impact of cause and effect. If I want an effect to happen, I have two options. I can allow the cause to be done by somebody else or I can take control of the cause and do it myself. I want a mango tree in my house, I cannot put a jackfruit in the ground and expect a mango tree to grow. I want to be successful in life, I can't do things which will make me unsuccessful and expect to become successful. I want a job in Google at 1.75 crores per annum package, one IIT student bought it just four months back to the Ritter newspaper. 1.75 crores per annum for a freshman from IIT. If he can get, why not you? Imagination doesn't cost you money. You write that, okay, this is what I want to do. If that effect is what you want to achieve in life, come to the column number three, which is the cause, which is your current set of activities. These current set of activities I am doing, will it take me to the effect that I want to achieve on 1st of May 2028? You have two choices. You can say that life is growing something at me, I will take whatever comes. Or say that I am challenged in life and say that this is what I want to achieve, this is what I want to fix as my goal. This is the dream that Dr. Abdul Kalam told the children to have, through which he said we will create India as a superpower by 2020. That man has gone. Now the goal has been moved from 2020 to 2047 by 27 years for one simple reason. The highest demographic dividend that we have in the world in India is 35% of the 144 crore population is below 30 years. This is much larger than the population of Europe and America put together. Below 30 years. And these are the people who are going to create the future of India 10, 5, 15, 20 years from now. And how are you going to shape? By just following the research that happened to you in your life? Or would you want to take the lagan in your hand and say that this is my life, this is my horse. I want to sit on top of it, hold the lagan and tell the horse this is where I want to go. Even if the horse doesn't go, be happy you have taken control. Many people ask me when your director and uh, principal are talking as far as speaking about the importance of positive attitude. I don't understand much till who I caught these words. Clean environment, positive attitude will not challenge, will not solve the problems of your life. The positive attitude will help you to take things in a stride and keep going for the good. Please why there's a big difference. This is what makes the difference between the final 0 0.004 seconds by which the gold medalist in 100 meter sprint was decided two days back. 0 0.004 seconds. First time in Olympics history. Normally it is the second digit. Now it has gone to the fourth digit. Early it was 9.58. The record is to be broken. Usain Bolt. Now it is 9.746 versus 9.748. That is the difference between gold medal and silver medal. That is the difference that will happen if you are able to push yourself. Look at your cost. If I 
I think I have returned. Now I take one day at a time. I always tell people, I was even telling the director when I was sitting down, that we are all happy that we are actually standing and watching each other because one percent of the world population that was yesterday did not wake up this morning. They did. For whatever reason, 40 years, 30 years, 80 years, 100 years, natural death, they went to a medical emergency, they died, or they were shot in a battlefield. One person of the population did not wake up this morning. You are away. You are studying in a college. Your parents are paying for it. You are able to breathe, you are able to see, you are able to hear. The five sensory gifts plus the ability to perceive through your sixth sense. Who else will have this gift? We'll use all this gift and still give up all the nature's gifts given to you and go back and keep crying like a baby when I didn't get a job. It's up to you to make. What are I saying will be practical if you just implement this one single word called habit. The cause is the habit. The word that you write on column number three, column number one is the serial number, column number two is the time slot, column number three is the habit. Initially you invest time in creating habits and after one, two, three years the habits start controlling you. The habits decide what you are, but unfortunately you are the master of the habit, you created it first. If you have created it, you can change it again. If I am headed from Nello to Chennai by road, which I am going to do after this session, and after one hour I find I am in Vijayawada, I know I have gone in the wrong direction. The first thing I have to do is to stop, take a U-turn, go back. If my life hasn't gone till now where it is supposed to go, and I am here in a situation today, and I do not like where the life is headed. The choice is for you to make by changing your habit early to the goal that I want. The first May 2028 is a placeholder that can be a goal for three months from now, that can be a goal for five months from now, one year from now, two years from now, the choice is yours. I decide what the goal is going to be. I decide it is my life. Nobody is going to come and give me anything beyond a sympathetic cry that I feel in life. In fact, many times I have seen practically that when I fail, many people are happy. Oh my God, he has also failed. Life is like that. It happens because life, 99% of the people are failing because they don't have a script for them. I remember two years back, I was speaking to a graduation ceremony in a women's college. It's a 3,500 students, very large auditorium. Now. And two girls after the session came and cried, said, Sir, first friend, somebody has told us that we can write our own life. Nobody has ever told. Had we heard this when we were 5 or 6 or 7, I would have had a different life. The only pressure is put on you many times, unfortunately. I am a parent, I have a daughter who did her CPA, she is married and well settled. But I did not do this mistake with her from a child. I did not put my expectation of life onto her. If the parents are here, please do not write your script on her. I did not become a child, son has to become a child. I did not become IAS, he has to be married. I did not get a marriage, I should write, he has to marry. It will not happen, she is already married. I can laugh a bit. It's okay. How are you doing? I am still awake. Good. So if you want this goal to happen, please bear in mind, it's your life, it's your step. At least from now on, in case something does not happen in your life the way you want it to happen, do not complain to the world that Somebody is changing my life. It's your life. If something doesn't happen today, you have 24 hours to change it tomorrow. Tomorrow morning I can decide. Even today I do that. I write the whole day how my life has to be. Today. So tomorrow morning I don't know whether it will be alive or not. It's not being pessimistic. I'm being practical realistic. Hence I go come to the main crux of creating this movie script for first May 2028. I am going to write 1400 pages of daily sheet. Write one week at a time. So you don't write 1400 sheets and make it like a big tabba and carry it around with you. And even journal it, there are free software tools available. Write one week at a time. Next one week, in my journey towards this imagined dream or goal of mine, what will I do today? From morning I get up till evening. Even if you allocate one hour per day, even if you allocate one hour per day for your goal, the rest of the eight, nine, ten hours do whatever you want. That's your life. It's not an issue. If that one hour is aligned to my goal, what would happen is that I start 
going towards my goal much faster. Do this for a week. Send me a feedback to your college principal or your director sir or many other faculty here. You will find a great change. In this journey you have two major tools with you. Which is what I want to share and tell you how to use it and then close it off and take this answer. Two major tools that you have in your life. Two major tools you have in your life is your ability to think and your ability to regulate your feelings. Thinking is also to great extent regulatable. Feelings is like a unbound force. I get upset, I shout at the world. I get upset, I am not going to perform best. If your ability to manage emotions and your ability to think are balanced well, you are going to become a great success. For which I want to give you three tools. The first tool that I personally use is I practice artfulness meditation. The second tool that I would like to share with you is your ability to visualize the future. Your ability to visualize the future is where you create the future and start living it day by day. Every day there are Google tools available to create a vision board. Vision board exercises are free in Google. Just create a vision board of what life has to be on 1st of May 2020. And see the vision board in terms of an animated PPT or a video or whatever. Put it in your mobile phone as a screen saver or on your laptop. Keep seeing it every day. What happens is you make use of the biggest strength that you have which is the power of your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is what helps you to achieve the life goals. By tuning the subconscious mind every day, by thinking of what my future imagined goal will be, I let the subconscious mind believe that I am going to reach there. The second is what I call as self-talk. Self-talk is a series of conversations you have inside of yourself. All the time, all of you in a day are having 60,000 conversations with your brain. I don't know how many of you are there. 60,000 conversations I'm having every day with my brain. And I'm telling my brain, I can't do this. I will fail. This is useless. That is waste. This is done. You have to change the self talk. What are you telling yourself? Are you seeing yourself as a successful person? Are you seeing yourself as a great entrepreneur in the future? Are you seeing yourself as someone certified with this, someone certified with that? I'm an engineer, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, whatever. If you are able to do that, keep telling yourself. I have seen people actually writing scripts and reading it to practice and make their mind be true. If you are able to meditate and regulate your thinking and feelings and if you are able to visualize your future and if you are able to talk to yourself continuously, maintaining a positive script, please bear in mind when we come back here, even if there is one single student who comes to me or to your management and says, on 7th of August 2024, there was this person called Mrs. Prakash who came and told that I can change my future by visualizing it and by living it day by day by changing my habits. I would be happy. I wish you a glorious future. Thank you.
I have the Nevada Meditation to our esteemed speaker, Mr. Prakash Deshadri sir, founder and CEO of Sea Change Consulting for the felicitation ceremony. I request all the head bodies to join the felicitation ceremony. We recognize not only their individual accomplishments but also the values they embody, hard work, perseverance, and compassion. Their presence among us today gives us an opportunity to express our gratitude and admiration for their exemplary work and their field. Thank you, sir, for raising today's event. I request everyone to pay attention for the lunch announcement. For ladies, the lunch will be arranged in the canteen. And for gents, we have seat block. Uh, in front of seat block, the lunch will be arranged. Thank you. We have indoor arrangement for ladies uh, within the block. I request all of the people, please be seated. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the Chief Guest for gracefully accepting our invitation and being with us here today in spite of their busy schedule. Thank you, sir. I would like to extend my thanks to the management, director, sir, and principal, sir, for extending their continuous support in every aspect. I extend my sincere thanks to all the HODs of various departments. I sincerely thank to all the teaching and non-teaching staff who have contributed in making this event a very grand success. I would like to thank all the parents as well for attending this event. Thank you. Our national anthem, Janagana Mana, is more than just a song. It's a journey that transports us back to our roots, reminding us of all the values and traditions that shape our identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 